Hey guys, it's Wildcat6305 coming to you from Ike's Treehouse outside of Augusta, Georgia. This video is going to be part three of my four part series of my uh, house rules, uh, which kind of subtitle is going to be this is going to be part two of my three part uh, of my R&D system, kind of the subset of my house rules. So just kind of the overview this is going to be the meat and potatoes kind of how the system works uh part the next video that i'm going to be doing is going to be uh, the technologies uh, and how each technology works um of the of my r d system so so that one's going to be kind of a little more sleek and fun this one's going to be a little bit more boring uh telling how it works telling how you get technology and and what i've done to change that up so hopefully you'll enjoy it and uh like i said this is probably gonna be the the, the boring video the the next video will be the the fun video the rules the units you know the creative things like that uh, that that we came up with so to give an overview there are four uh ways to get technology uh just kind of a brief high level simplistic view uh, you you can get an R&D token. You can exchange technology between uh, between your team within your alliance. You can capture a capital and gain technology, and you can win a, a young grasshopper victory token, victory objective, victory point, whichever term you want to use. If you acquire a victory token, you get a technology. Now, granted, there is a little bit that's simplistic simply said there are some uh, caveats to that but um, just high level those are the four ways to get technology in my game and I want to break each each one of those down a little bit more uh, to let you know the caveats of each so first off let's talk about go in a little bit more detail with R&D tokens what are R&D tokens why do you need them why do you want them what do you do with them uh, R&D token will let you select technology. Now, I'll just take a time out and chase a rabbit and explain some terminology I use in my house rules here. There is selected text and there are enabled text. So, it's kind of easier to explain if I say what an enabled tech is. An enabled tech is a technology that you have is unlocked uh, another way to thinking about it, you have it and you use it. Um, it is enabled. The selected tech is a technology that you say, hey, this is what I want. Um, this is the technology I'm wanting to get. But there's a process in between here um, that you have to go through. But a selected tech is you identifying, hey, I want this tech and, and that's the one I want to enable. So to say that, an R&D token allows you to select a technology, um, simply put. So how do you get an R&D token? Well, three ways you can get an R&D token. Either by buying it straight out for five IPCs, you can spend one IPC for research dice, uh, for R&D uh, breakthrough dice, and you get a breakthrough on a one. You roll a one, you get a breakthrough, you, you get an R&D token. You can have up to three dice at one time. And, and finally, the last way to earn, a, well, the only way to earn an R&D token, the other way is you're, you're buying them, kind of. The, uh, if you capture, the first time you capture or defend a victory city. So, so what, do you, what do you mean by defend a victory city? Well. Take for take example Honolulu. Say there's a J1 attack or a J2 attack, and Japan tries to take Honolulu, but the Americans prevail and hold on to Honolulu. Well, then the Americans would get a victory token for keeping that that victory city. Now, same scenario. Well, under that same scenario, say the J2 attack, and Japan takes Manila they take the Philippines well then they get a victory they get an R&D token for taking Manila as a victory city 
So that's what I mean by defending or capturing a victory city. Kind of adds that uh, earn element to it, or, or you did something big, uh, rewarding you for for the battle, not just a big campaign. Uh, I kind of think of a victory objective as a campaign type type thing, and and a victory city being a battle victory or something like that. So so you get an R and D token and. It, so what do you do with the R&D token? As we said before, you select a technology. But when you select a technology, what do you have to do to get it into an enabled state? Well, you have to have five IPCs. So, so for another five IPCs and three slots available in an industrial complex, you can take the selected tech and produce it into an enabled tech and enable it. And then that way, um, you can actually start using it immediately and it's your nation's tech until the end of the game. So you gain an R&D token and you can either gain that by paying 5 IPC or you pay 1 IPC for per R&D dice and you can have up to 3 of those and then you can get an R&D token or capture a victory city. And then once you select a technology, you get the technology piece, and then it goes over to, and then you enable that technology. So, in one of my prior videos, I showed my scoreboard that I made here, and uh, essentially the way we track this on the scoreboard here, is that when you enable a technology, or when you select a technology, I have a magnet on the back of my R&D token, and so I, we just put it on there. So uh, say a nation selected, we'll, we'll say uh, Germany selected mass production, then you put the, the token on mass production, and then, you, then I also have magnets on my control markers, and then you place that on top of it. And then that denotes that Germany has selected, they don't have it enabled, but they have mass production selected. And then once they pay the five IPCs and have three uh, industrial complex slots free, you take this off and then bam, Germany has mass production. Now, you don't necessarily need a control marker for all 24 of these texts. You can you can do you can just use one because it's because my system's progressive. So if so if your control marker's over here on phase two, then you, then it's implied that phase one has been uh, that that nation also has phase one. And then also with these uh, texts, this is what we use as a trade token as we, as we trade uh, on the board. But that's how we show whether for the text enabled or selected. Uh, that's that's the designation, how how we designate that. So, as I was saying, so R and D token. That's the first way that you get a technology. The second way is through tech exchange, and I use exchange as a collective term, uh, meaning one nation is giving, sharing or exchanging technology with each, with within your team and uh, those, those three terms have spe well those two of those terms have specific definitions in my rules um, but sharing and giving uh, are pretty much the same thing uh, you're, you're sharing a tech with your teammate and and so just because one nation you know if the US you know looking back at my tech it's here so we can just easier to talk specifics say as the US develops uh, mechanized division then then they can just share that mechanized division with the UK uh, and how do you share well through either an uh, strategic bomber or through an infantry infantry and strategic bombers are allowed to carry technology and probably strategic bombers are what you're going to want to use uh, most 
in most cases, especially when you're having to reach out far uh, from places to carry uh, technology uh, from one place to another. But infantry are also usable. Um, excuse me, I was trying to... So there you go. So you can either use infantry or a strategic bomber to carry technology. And we denote that by just placing a technology token on the board uh, and we place that unit on top of it showing that it's carrying that technology. Now the unit that's carrying it, it can't attack anything. It can defend itself, but, but it cannot attack anything uh, while it's carrying a technology. So, so, when you, so when you're exchanging techs, techs go from one capital to the other capital. So somehow or another, in, in my earlier example of just mechanized division, the U.S. is trying to share mechanized division with the U.K. Either the U.S. transports the technology to the U.K. or the U.K. comes over to the U.S. and then transports the technology back. Either way, the technology has to get from Washington to London in that example. So that's, that's the second way you get technology. The third way is capturing a capital. Now, up until now, you kind of have been able to select your technologies in a way. Uh, when you get R&D token, you have this full chart of technologies. Now, granted, you're only uh, you're only allowed to select whatever phase you're on, so, so typically six technologies at a time. Uh, actually, the first round, you're only allowed to select between four um, because if you note, there's an asterisk here on these two that says required mass production. So, so you only have four technologies to, to choose from until you get open up mass production. But then, but then you have a choice of six every time but you get to choose between all those six of which one you want. Say all that to say, capturing a capital, you're getting the technology that that nation has. So if you're, uh, so if you can, so if uh, Germany pulls off a sea lion attack and captures London and London has, uh, let's just name off two more technologies if they have veteran artillery, heavy flak, and infantry conscription. Well, then the rule is that you get half of the technology rounded down uh, when you capture a capital. So, so that means three divided by two is one and a half, rounded down is one. So, sorry, you gotta do a little math, but one technology. I can make a chart if, if you don't want to do math, but so you get one technology and the defender chooses which tech you get. So as I said, heavy flak, veteran artillery, and infantry conscription will when Germany takes London because the London researchers and the people in the capital, they're trying to hide everything and destroy their documents and papers. That means they destroyed two of the three and but they left one and the Brits get to choose which technology that the Germans get. Now what happens if they choose infantry conscription and Germany already has infantry conscription? Well then they then Germany can move to the next thing in in that research area and just move right along. But on the flip side what happens if the UK doesn't have any techs yet? Well, then Germany gets an R&D token, and then essentially they get to start over. They can they can figure out what what they want, select a tech, and then pay five IPCs. Now, when you capture the capital, you don't have to worry about transporting the tech back to your uh, base, like in a, a international technology exchange but you do still have to pay five IPCs and have three slots available in an industrial complex before you can enable the tech. So this rule still applies. So this is the flow chart kind of governing the whole thing. And then finally, 
victory objective. If you obtain a victory objective, you get an enable tech. So these are kind of bigger deals. As I said earlier, this is kind of like a reward for completing a campaign, not necessarily just a mission or an objective, you know, winning a battle like winning a victory city or capturing a capital. But, but getting a victory objective, you get an enabled tech that's immediately enabled. You don't have to go through the whole five IPC three slots rule, which uh, kind of frees it up a little bit. Uh, which you know I feel like you should because the those rules are, are a little bit those victory conditions are a little bit more involved uh, and it's you know now now granted there are a couple that uh, overlap uh, such as you know uh, Axis taking London Axis taking Moscow but you know really those you know Moscow and London are capitals and Sydney are capitals you may not get a tech out of that anyways but but still it's a victory condition there's there's others such as you you gain six victory cities in the pacific then you know you get an r and d token or you get an enable tech with that as well the reason why i don't feel like that's too much is because i have too many techs one might think i have 24 technologies so and and the and my basic theory is I want you to have the technology. I don't. I didn't come up with 24 technologies just to sit on the shelf and nobody ever use them. I want technology to be a part of my game and for and for you to play with them, and enjoy them, and and turn turn the tide of battle and and make the game more fun and playable. So that's why I kind of made made it a little bit more available to get the technologies. And really that, that's kind of my, my rule book goes over and a lot of it goes over things uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, probably the only the biggest detail that I haven't said is is this part right here on the technology exchange, um, uh, international tech exchange that be careful with your placement because techs can be intercepted. So going back to this, if you have a, a guy um, place him on a territory, then your enemy could come back, knock him out, and take the tech and, and run with it. So just be aware of that. Uh, that is a possibility uh, with, the inter with the intercepted techs, which, lead, which make it a looted tech, and then they can do the same thing, get it. If you if you intercept a tech and loot it, it has to get back to your capital, and then you pay five IPCs and three slots in your industrial complex. And the only other important rule that I don't think I covered is that you can only have two R and D tokens and two selected techs at the end of your turn. So what do I mean by that? Well, say you have one selected tech at the beginning of your turn and you didn't pay five IPC to enable it and then you capture a capital and then you gain three technologies from them or, or, or you gain two technologies from them. They had four, you get two. Well, now you got three selected techs that you gotta do something with. You need to enable one of them before the end of your turn or else you lose one. You pick which one you lose if you don't enable it, but but you can only have two, and that's just to kind of limit things and, and make you put them in, um, or make you think about it and, and and play with it like that. So because some of these techs are given more money, and and to balance it out, you need to be reinvesting in the tech to make the more the influx of money not break the game. So, once again, just kind of a uh, overview. This is the flowchart in its entirety. And as I said, there's four ways at the beginning just to recap everything to get an enabled tech uh, through R&D token, through exchange with your allies, capturing a capital, and victory objective. 
and each are kind of its own on on the path but uh that's that those are the four basic ways r d token tech capture capital and victory objective now and and one one anecdote i wanted to add to in uh general hand grenade's video where he was talking about playing with his house rules how it really kind of takes sometimes to turn three or four to get the techs involved well i found using these rules techs get enabled round one uh for some countries uh so, you know your germany's and u.s uh sometimes your uh, uk sometimes your soviets and japan will enable attack round one which really just out of the gate changes the game which is which is fun because you know if you're playing with uh bob and billy today and then you're playing with joe and john the next day they may enable a different text from each other so it just gives us a, a different feel uh in addition to the different strategies so that's just one anecdote and like i said we really like it we think it adds a lot to it and the next video that i'll be doing is going over the technologies